Hopefully this is not too long. So if I speak quickly, you're gonna have to scrub, rewind, etc. So uh, just a quick review, some basic ideas about Venn diagrams. And um, so first, what is a Venn diagram? I, I think of it just as a visualiz visualization of sets and their relationships or interrelationships or whatnot. So for instance, um, I have this little Venn diagram up here in the upper left-hand corner that has a universe, which is in purple. That means everything that could possibly be in either of these two sets. And then set A is one thing, and set B is another thing. So if I were to say, um, shade the area that is set A, um, you would do the following. This would be shaded. This is a representation of everything that's in set A. If I'm going outside the circle, uh, hopefully you know what I mean. I don't mean to do that and say that there's a little bit outside. But anyway, um, if I were to try to identify that which was in set B, uh, let's try to stick with the colors, set B, you would shade everything that's in here. Now, note that, of course, there are seemingly are items that are in B that are also in A, but it doesn't matter. I'm asking, what are all the items that are in B? And that would include this little football-like place that's overlapped with um, A. Uh, if I'm asking for, for instance, what is the union of A and B, the union of A and B would, would be all that was in A and all that was in B. So it's really this whole kind of binocular region, uh, these two circles, including the overlap. All right. Now, this gets a little bit more tricky. What about A intersect B? So intersect, we call, is the, those elements that are in A as well as in B. And so that's this. So um, to review, intersect is where um, the elements are in both. Uh, maybe I should write it that way. Elements are in both sets. And oftentimes we tie the word and to the uh, operator or relationship intersect. So it has to be in A and B. Um, the union is often the, uh, is the elements that are in either, or either if you prefer, either set or either set. And the word that's usually associated with that is or. So the language would be um, the element that is in A or B. So an element can be in A or B, and it would be included in the set that's the A union B. Okay? So A union B, it could be in A. Is it in A or B? Well, certainly it is. If it's in B, is it in B or A? Yes, it's in B. If it's in both of them, well, it's in one of them, so it still meets the criteria, okay? So that's, that's and and or, or intersect and union, not in that order necessarily, okay? So then if we go back to the ideas of, uh, I lost the word for a second, A, the complement of A, I have to back this out here. Oh, poopy face. The shading's just a pain, so it's easier to undo this way. Maybe I'll scratch this out, edit it out, because that's what's adding time. Goofy stuff like that. So now if we're talking about the complement of A, that would be everything that's not in the set A. So that's everything, every element not in A. So that would be represented by this shading. So everything not in A or complement A would be this. That would be everything that's in B. But all, And so I couldn't include this little sliver here because that is in A but I do need to include the rest of the universe as well, so don't forget that part. The rest of the universe of possible elements plus whatever's in B 
with the exception of that football shaped sliver. So basically the complement of A is everything that's not A. Now if I go back to, let's say, uh, complement of B, of course, is then everything that's not in B. So again, we can't include this football-like sliver, but everything that's not in that circle of B would be the complement of B. Now, of course, that's fairly straightforward. It gets trickier when we start doing things like this. What is the union of complement A and B? So the union of B with its with the complement of A. So how I how I see it is there's this part that's B that and I have to join it with the complement of A. Now the complement of A is this. So everything that's not A. And then if I join it with everything that's in B, all I'm doing is adding this part because this was in B. So it's everything except for this moon shape of that's left over from A. That one's not too bad. What if I said the intersection of the complement of A intersect B. Now I'm talking about it has to be in the complement of A and in B. So the complement of A looks like this again, right? All right, and then B itself is this part, including that. But which portion is both of those? Both of those. So that would be, uh, maybe I can try it. Yeah, let's try this screaming green. That's this. This is in B, but it's also in the complement of A. So I'm going to get rid of everything and, and show you that more clearly. This is in B, but also is in the complement of A. So complement A intersect B is this portion. Okay, That's all we're going to do there. So if we start doing the same sorts of things with uh, a three-circle Venn diagram, it gets more complicated because we can do things like this. A union B. Let's do it this way. Uh, intersect C. So when we have parentheses this way, we have to still follow order of operations. So B intersect C. So where is a portion that is B as well as C? B and C, that's this portion, right? So now if we're talking about A union B intersect C, I'm going to take this portion, which was B intersect C, and join it with the set that is A. So all of A joined together with this intersection of B and C. So it's this, uh, I don't know, hand mirror or something? I don't know what kind of shape you call that. This little, the circle of A with this little football overlapping with B and C. So it's that kind of thing. Always goes with the parentheses first. And you can see how complicated this can get depending on what's being asked. But just take one little tiny step at a time. Um, I'm trying to make the video short, so we're not going to go another example, but uh, you can always ask me in class. So here's an example in how to set up a Venn diagram. So for instance, in this scenario, we have students and the magazines that we read, or that you read. And of course, I know all of you read these. Um, I've changed one of them. Let's see if we can figure out which one was changed. So 19 students read Business Week. 18 students read The Wall Street Journal. 50 read The Hulk. 13 read Business Week and The Journal. 11 read The Wall Street Journal and The Hulk. 13 read Business Week and The Hulk. And 9 read all three. So if you're going to construct this, uh, the Venn diagram for this, this is going to be tough because I have to scroll back and forth. But in any case, we're, you're always going to want to start with the most constricted or most restricted, however you want to think of it, um, region. And that would be this. Which region has all three? Go to the smallest, not necessarily smallest by number, but the smallest uh, geographically or spatially in the triple diagram. So I'm going to do it below because I think it's a little easier and then we're going to sketch this out. So here's my Venn diagram. I have three distinct regions, but they were going to, not distinct, three regions that, that are going to overlap. So three circles.
Okay, so there are my three circles. This is the region that we're concerned with first. This is the region that is part of all three circles. Okay, so let's label the three circles. And then we're going to put a number in that center portion. So we're going to label them. Of course, the green one's going to be the Hulk. And let's choose, uh, since it was first, let's go Business Week with yellow. Business Week. And the other one was the Wall Street Journal. So orange is Wall Street Journal. Wall Street Journal. Okay? So remember, not, nine students read all three. So we're going to put a nine in here. And that's, of course, nine students that read the Wall Street Journal. But those nine students also read Business Week. Also read Business Week. And those nine students also read the Hulk. Then you can choose any of the next three, these three, next level of restrictedness uh, or constrained. Um, so it's one step less. So it's just kind of a double, double overlap. So let's do this in 13. 13 read Business Week and the Hulk. So that means it's this region here. 13 people exist in this little football that's both Business Week and the Hulk. But we already have nine in there. We have these original nine that were all three. So 13 minus nine, that means there's four people out here. So that there are still nine in the center, but only, and four out here to make it so that this little football only has a total of 13, which is accurate based on the information we were given. Do the same thing for the overlap between Wall Street Journal and the Hulk. So Wall Street Journal and the Hulk, and that's 11, so that's two, nine and two is 11. And then 13, Business Week and the Journal. That's this upper football. And so that's 13 minus 9. That's 4 there. They happen to be the same because it was 13 in this region and 13 in that region. And then we can step out and go to 50 students read the Hulk. Of course, the most highly intelligent of the group, 50 read the Hulk. So that means everything in this green has to add up to 50. But we already have, what, 9, 13, 14, 15 there. 9 plus 4 plus 2 is 15. So 50 minus 15 is, what, 35? So that means 35 in the rest of this green portion. That's the Hulk only. 35, 4, 9, and 2. If we go then and look at the 18, 18 then read the Wall Street Journal alone. So that means 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, this must be three to get this Wall Street Journal circle of orange to be a total of 18. And then 19 students read Business Week. So 9 plus 4 is 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. An additional 2, or 2 in addition to this 9, 4, and 4 will give us a total of 18 for Business Week in the yellow circle. So next thing you do is add up 35, 4, 9, and 2 but we knew that the green was 50, and you can check, but that's 50, plus another four is 54, plus another two is 56, plus one, two, three is 59. So there are 59 students that read some sort of magazine, possibly all three, maybe only one. And uh, I didn't tell you in the beginning of this, the, the early part of this problem told you that there were 60 uh, business students so that means there's one of those 60, one, out in the universe that does not read any of these three magazines. Maybe they read something else. Maybe they read Daredevil. I don't know. Or Deadpool. Who, who knows? But they don't read any of these three. So that's how you would use this type of information to construct a Venn diagram. Then you should be able to answer all kinds of questions. What's Business Week, uh, Union, Wall Street Journal, right? So that would be all of these business weeks plus all of these Wall Street journals. But you need to be careful. If you just went up here and added business week, which was 19, and added the Wall Street Journal, which was 18, you're going to make an error. What that's doing, if you look at the Venn diagram, is you're adding 19, everybody in the yellow in here, and you're adding 18, everybody in the orange, here. But what did you do twice? 
you added this region two times. So oftentimes this type of uh, arithmetic um, needs to be adjusted so you can two, do it two different ways. You can either, oops, oops. You can either, uh, you can think of it as Business Week Union Wall Street Journal is equal to uh, Business Week plus Wall Street Journal minus Business Week intersect Wall Street Journal. Okay, so then what you do is you'd add the two circles, but then subtract this overlap so you don't count it twice. The other way to do it is just add the numbers up that are inside the Venn diagram correctly. So we know that Business Week was 19, and then add two more, and add three more, so that you don't count this overlap twice. So little tricks. Uh, and so they can do all kinds of problems. I'm going to stop there so this video doesn't get too long.